Hello, in this episode of To The Point Code, we'll be looking at how to set up PHP and also MySQL database for development on our PC. This will be the first part of our mini PHP series. So to install PHP and MySQL database on your PC, you can download PHP and MySQL database separately and install them. But solutions exist where you are provided with PHP and also MySQL database as one package. Examples of these packages include ZAMP and MAMP. In this episode, we are going to make use of ZAMP. So to start with, we need to install ZAMP. So let's head to our browser and install ZAMP. So on the ZAMP page, we download the right version for our operating system, whether Windows, Linux or macOS. In this case, I'm on Windows, so I'll download the Windows version. This should start the download automatically. Now once the download has completed, we head to the installer package and install it. So we click on next. On the component page, I will leave everything checked and click on next again. Now the installation folder, we will leave it as it is. We will leave it in the C directory and also the ZAMP folder. It is recommended that you put the ZAMP folder in the root directory of your storage disk. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and click on next. We select the appropriate language as well. Finally, we click on next to start the installation. The installation might take a while, so I'll fast forward it. Now once the installation wizard has completed, we go ahead to check the box to start the control panel and click on finish. Now what we are seeing is the control panel. Now the first two things we see is Apache and MySQL. The Apache will be the server for our PHP. Without this, we will not be able to run our PHP projects. Likewise, MySQL here will allow us to use MySQL database. To be able to use them, we need to click on the start button next to each of them. Now they have turned green, which means that they are ready to be used. Once we've turned on Apache and MySQL, let's head to the browser again. Now let's visit localhost. Now we see that exam web page has been displayed. This is a locally hosted page. Now where can we find this? Let's visit our ZAMP installation directory. That is, we'll find ZAMP in our C directory. While in the directory, we can see that a lot of directory and files are here. Now our focus here will be on the htdocs folder. Inside this folder is where we'll be creating all our PHP files. Now we have some files here already but we will not be using them. So let's go ahead to select all and delete them. Once we've done that, let's go ahead to create a test PHP file. We'll first create a folder. Now inside this directory, we need to create an index.php file. Once we have done that, I'll go ahead to open it in a text editor. All I'll do here is to say, hello world, this is my first PHP project. I'll use an H1 tag. Now I'll save it. Now back to the browser. Let's visit localhost again. Now we see that first PHP website is here. This is the project that we have just created. Now clicking on it, we see that hello world, this is my first PHP project has been displayed. Now if you want to create another project, we just head back to the htdocs folder and create another project. Now once we go back to the local host and refresh, we see that my second project tool is being displayed. So this is how you are going to create and run your PHP project. 
Now what about MySQL database? That can also be accessed easily in the browser. Once again, we go to localhost and visit the subdirectory PHP My Admin. Now PHP My Admin provides us with an interface to manage our databases. Now on the left side, we have some databases which already exist. Now to create a new database, I just come to new and provide the database a name. Let's say my first database. We can click on create now. Now on the left side, we see that my first database has been created. Now once we've selected that, we can go ahead to create a table. Let's say our table will store details about students. So let's give our table a name student. And we decide the number of columns we want. In this case, I'll stick with four columns. Once you have done that, we click on go. Now here we provide the details of our columns. I'll call my first column ID. This will be a unique identifier for our table. That is, each of the students will have a different ID. Now for each column, you can provide a name, a type, length, default, among others. It is not an SQL course, so we will not go into much details what all these properties mean. For the ID, the type will be int. We will leave the length blank and we will take the AI here. This stands for auto increment. That is, the value should increase whenever we add a new record to it. So we don't need to enter the value of the ID for each record that we create. Record here means each entry that we make into the table. I'll call the second one first name. Now this will be a bar car. And I'll give it a length of 15. My third attribute will be last name. This will also be a bar car. And I'll give it length of 50. Now my last attribute will be date of birth. And this will be a date. Now once I'm satisfied with all the properties, I can go ahead to save. Optionally, I can preview the SQL to see the SQL code that will be used. Once I've done that, I can go ahead to save to create the table. Now under my first DB, you can see that the student's table has been created. Now we have the option to insert data into the table. Once we click on the insert, we can provide some details. The ID will increase automatically so we will not touch that. So let's add some details. After entering some random details, we can click on go to insert it into our database. We see two rows inserted here, which means that our data has been stored successfully in the database. Now we can click on browse to see what we have in our table. We can see that we have two details here and the ID automatically increased by one. So at this point, we've been able to set up PHP and also MySQL database on our PC using XAMPP or XAMPP. Now at this point, let's try and quickly insert data into our database from our PHP file. So let's head to the code editor. Now in the code editor, let's create some input fields. For the input fields, remember that the name property is very important. That's what we'll be using to fetch the details from the fields. Now for the form tag, we'll give it an action and also a method. For this particular file, we want the details to be available in the index.php file. So we'll use that as the action. 
Also, we provide a method. In this case, we use the post method. Now at the very top, let's put some PHP tags. Before we continue, let's see the output of our code. We can see that our input fields are here. This is not the best looking website in any way, but here we are just focusing on the functionality. Now first of all, we need to establish a connection between our PHP file and the MySQL database. To do that, we'll make use of my SQLI underscore connect. My SQLI is just an improved version of my SQL. Now we need to provide some details to this function. First of all, we need to provide the name of our host, and that is localhost. Secondly, we need to pass the name of our database user, and thirdly, the password of this user. To find this, let's go back to phpMyAdmin. Now in phpMyAdmin, when we click on the server and also the user account, we can see details about the users we have here. Now we will make use of the last user here. The name of the user is root, the host name is localhost and there is no password. Now back in the code editor, we add those details. For the password, we just put empty strings. Now the last argument will be the name of the database and our database is called my first db. Now after creating the connection, we check if everything was successful. If everything was not successful, we exit the script and provide an error message. In addition to this, we can add my SQLI connect error. This is how it looks and I don't know how it is pronounced. It is a function. Else if the connection is successful, let's echo a success message. Now let's save and head back to the browser. Now let's refresh the page and we see that connection is successful. Now let's target the details of our browser. To do that, we'll make use of the post global variable. So first we check if the value of the post submit has been set. If it has been set, then we'll grab the details of the input fields using the same post variable. We copy and paste it two more times. Now to ensure that the data we get from the form cannot pose any harm to our database, we will wrap each post variable in HTML entities. Finally, to proceed with the insertion into our database, we will write a SQL query. We we'll use the name of our table, that is students. We will select the fields, first name, last name, and date of birth. Now we pass these values to it. We wrap each of the values in single quotes. Put a semicolon in the query string and also after the string. Now we run the query by using my SQLI underscore query. First of all, we will pass the connection string to it. Secondly, we will pass our query variable to it. Now we we'll store the result in a variable. 
once you've done that we go ahead to check if it was successful so let's cut it and put it in an if statement once again if it was not successful we will exit and output a message Now let's go ahead to try it out. Don't forget to save it first. Now we have a warning here. Oh, I forgot the is set function. We first of all have to check if our post value has been set. So we make use of the is set function. And the warning should be fixed now. So now let's try it out. Let's say we have a first name of Michael and the last name of Jordan for the date of birth we choose any date at all now let's submit it says the data has been set successfully but it says we have an undefined array key date on line 12 it is supposed to be date of birth Now the message we have here means that the data has been inserted successfully but it's very likely that our third value which was the date of birth was not saved. So before we try again let's check the database. Clicking on students we see that we have a third record which is Michael Jordan and the date of birth was not saved. After fixing the error let's refresh and try again. So once we refreshed, we see that our data has been set again, but now the date was included. So up to this point, we've been able to set up PHP on also MySQL database on our PC using XAMPP or XAMPP. Also, we've seen how to link an input field in our PHP file to the MySQL database and insert data into it. In the next episode, we will start with our PHP CRUD application and we will be creating an attendance list as the project. We will learn how to create, read, update and also delete records from our database from the PHP interface. And that's all for this episode. Thanks for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next episode.